Hello and welcome back to Data News of the Week. You know how this goes. This is a video where we go through all the little blips and blobs of news stories that have occurred this week that involve data and we squeeze it all into a single video. Now, first thing I want to talk about today, I'm sure you've already heard about it, but there's a few extra details that have sort of bubbled to the surface and that is USB 4 version 2. That's right, they said there wouldn't be a sequel, but here we are. Uh, reported to deliver up to 80 gigabits per second, which is crazy town banana pants that is double that of thunderbolt 3 and 4 and it isn't just that uh, the usb uh, themselves uh, they issued this uh, kind of press release here that not only defined uh, that it could go up to 80 gigabits per second but also that it presented advantages to existing usb 3.2 data transmissions to exceed that of 20 gigabits per second now Almost certainly they're referring to USB 3.2 Gen 2 X2 uh, of that awful naming convention. But still, when we're talking about, you know, uh, 8K USB-C monitors slowly starting to be promoted and shown off at the same time, we're seeing uh, DisplayPort adapters and the, the nature and the crossover between Thunderbolt and USB 4 becoming more and more um, you know, intertwined together by Intel. It's really nice to see that USB 4 there has the potential now to quite easily exceed that of Thunderbolt 3 and 4 moving forward. But what's kind of what everyone's thinking right now is that naming convention. Namely, even if you head over to Wikipedia right now and you just take even a glance at the naming convention of USB, it still continues to be an absolute nightmare to follow. I and mean, whenever I talk about devices here on the channel, all too often I would trip over some of that USB naming convention, and particularly now that USB 3.2 has been diversified so, so much right now in terms of its available variations, not even taking into account USB types. I think USB uh, version 2.0 is only going to make things ever more fractious. Um, again, there are lots of articles out there. I do recommend checking out the XDA developer forum uh, one here. There's quite some useful information and some links there in that article. It's linked below. Otherwise, I will, of course, link to the full article there from USB themselves uh, detailing a lot more about their intended plans although it is still quite cloaked in a bit of mystery there next up i almost made a standalone video about this but i decided it wasn't quite enough to be on its own um this is to do with seagate iron wolf nas drives uh they were really really quiet about this this was one of the most low-key releases i've seen for a very long time but the iron wolf pro series is now being is now available in two different variations with another variation on there i'm going to call it the v2 or version 2 or otherwise you could refer to it as the nt series of drives which are higher workload uh, now if you go to their official pages again there's been virtually no press release about this but their uh, generation of pro grade hard drives for nas those 8 to 24 base systems there now has a newer version that has a reported 550 terabytes per year workload limit an mtbf boosted up to 2.5 million hours and the performance being increased by around uh between 15 and 35 megabytes per second per capacity tier there and again they've not talked about this aloud it's ultimately uh, an iron wolf pro drive with the data recovery services on board uh, and the tailored firmware but far more geared in design and more comparable to that of an exos now if you go into the data sheet uh, from the brand, you can find out more information about each of the capacity tiers and how each one, the NT versus the NE series there, how they compare in terms of that durability as mentioned and of course the ca uh, capacity performance differences on each tier. Or you can head over to the full article that I've written over on NAS Compares. Again, they're sporting a brand new label there. Um, and it kind of details a lot of the distinct differences between the capacities there. But again, a very low-key uh, release there from Seagate on their NAS series of drives. And just in case you hadn't already got sick of hearing the words NAS and ransomware together already this week, Zixel, uh, the much more low-key affordable NAS brand that I very rarely talk about on the channel, they as well have had a vulnerability found in their system that allows remote execution of command. Now... It should be highlighted that it seems like the impact of this is incredibly small. I've not really heard much in terms of people being impacted by this right now, but this only really goes to underline that idea that no one NAS brand 
is ultimately 100% bulletproof. It is a question of degrees. And opening up your NAS to the internet is always going to be something of a problem. Now, again, if we head into the NVD, we can find out more information about the vulnerability. Indeed, they did highlight a press release on their own system about it. They even very quickly issued a patch to close this vulnerability there. But again, without the more sophisticated remote access um, protocols in place from Zixel, they're a much smaller company, a lot of users would have been opening their systems directly to the internet, probably flashing that Zixel firmware in the process, who knows, but um, it does look like this is a vulnerability that was identified very, very quickly and updated very, very quickly as well, but still nonetheless, we, uh, we're not done with the subject of ransomware uh, right now on the subject of uh, on the video dating news of the week, but I do recommend maybe subscribing to NAS or server-based releases here on the NVD via the CVE listings there on the NIST pages. Again, rec I recommend this article here. Um, again, linked in the description. They go into more detail than anyone else on this vulnerability, although there hasn't been a huge amount of impact of this. But, you know, let's move over to something else a little bit ransomware shall we? And concluding uh, today, we can talk again about the rubbish subject of ransomware with this uh, recommendations and something highlighted by the US security agencies are the sheer number of vulnerabilities that have been highlighted recently in a lot of our more common devices. The numbers really have seemed to have leapt up recently. Uh, Bleeping Computer, this article does highlight quite a lot more information about a lot more domestic and I would argue um, popular uh, platforms that have been impacted. Obviously earlier this week we've spoken about the QNAP photo station deadbolt vulnerability being made uh, public there. But again, uh, there's a D link is listed on here, Oracle, Netgear, Android, Google, Chromium. They are all there. And indeed, if you head over to this cybersecurity page linked in the description, you can find out a lot more information about which of those have been updated. They're being urged by uh, US security uh, services to update these quite substantially. But the sheer number of impacted companies and software right now within the last three weeks has really leapt up. And it seems like a lot of vulnerabilities there must have been some kind of inherent uh, repeatable known factor in these uh, vulnerabilities that are being found on the predominantly Linux-based platforms here as well. So do stay tuned, and I do strongly recommend checking out this website. Uh, link to the description, if not to sign up for updates to specific brands that may affect you. But also just to kind of read up on this enormous wave of impacted devices and brands within such a short space of time, and it's Again, only keenly highlighting this being, for some reason, the week of ransomware here on NAS Compares, that we need to stay on top of our network security. And more importantly, thinking about how we communicate with it remotely. And I think people need to be a little bit more educated on this. Hence why uh, me and Eddie, along with some stuff next week with um, True NAS, we are going to be revisiting the subject of NAS security quite quickly here on the channel. Stay tuned for that. But this has been Dating News of the Week. Pretty low key this week, it has to be said. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Again, Dating News of the Week every week. Stay tuned for it. Like and subscribe as appropriate. But otherwise, have yourself a lovely weekend. And I'll see you next week.